We plead the blood of Jesus over them. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Surround them now with your holy angels. Surround them now with your holy angels. Come on, let's pray. 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 Surround them now with your holy angels. Your holy angels. Your holy angels. Surround them now with your holy angels. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We decree peace. We decree salvation. We decree healing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How you doing? Good. Woo! Free? Yeah. Freedom! Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Is Jesus not good? What? That's right. Chains are broken. We speak that prophetically. Come on, church. We speak prophetically that the chains are broken off of our loved ones. They're broken off of us. They're broken off of this church. And they're broken off of the church in America. Come on. You know. If you don't know, you know now of the attacks that comes down for the churches right now. Such a wicked attack. We lower the music. The music. Yeah, lower. Oh, okay. You know, seriously, such an attack against the churches right now that, that, you know, some are even too afraid to even move in the Holy Spirit or even meet. Let me tell you something. We have greater power in us because of Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, right? I want you to say that over yourselves. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Therefore, I have no fear. I will not fear what, the ma what man can do to me. Right? I fear God Almighty. Amen? I fear God Almighty. Amen. It's the fear of the Lord that we will walk in. It is the fear of God. Lift up your hands and just say, Lord, we thank you for what you've done this day already. We thank you for a mighty move of your spirit. I thank you, Lord God, for freedom, setting captives free, and bringing healing in this room already today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all God's children said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, you can, you can go to your seats if you're able. I'm going to get right to the word here this morning. Uh, I'm just going to reiterate for those that maybe didn't hear, but let me tell you, on Saturday night, such a glorious move of his spirit just like we had just now Amen. and we had such incredible healings uh th this one lady i don't see her here today but shauna was her name and she came in she couldn't see on the side she had no peripheral vision and her father also did not have peripheral vision she told us that and so we took authority over any generational thing going on in her body right and we all witnessed it. We all witnessed this healing power of God for this sweet little gal that just giggled every time the presence of God just would touch her. She would just giggle. But we tested her eyes and she was able to see. And we give God all the glory, all the praise. You know, she said, I told her, sit here. Don't go back to your seat. Just sit up at the front for a little while. And she said, I felt like the Lord was doing surgery over my eyes. She says, I can feel, it's just felt like surgery over my eyes. And uh, so, yeah, she said, I'm, I'm healed. I'm going to go back to the doctor. She goes, I'm going to let him know. Because she didn't want, she had already gone to the doctor. And she already found out what was going on with her eyes. But she didn't want anything. She wanted the power of God to touch her. And she came in expecting. She came in expecting to be healed, and she was healed. She left healed, so we're grateful. Not only that, but she had a spinal injury, roller skating. And uh, she said she was in chronic pain, but when we prayed for her, all her pain left. She fell to the ground, all of her pain left. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And then this other one, two other ones, um, it was from somebody in our house. Tim comes to House of Glory. Sciatica pain, totally healed. And knee pain, 
totally healed. And I text his wife during the week to see, how's Tim doing, by the way? How's Tim doing? She says, oh, he's good. He's healed. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I give God the glory. That's 26 for the, so far in our month of February that are reported to me, that is. 26 reported healings so far, thus far. We're not counting the deliverances, and, and we're only counting the ones that people tell us. But we, Saturday we had a massive deliverance, didn't we? But the person left free and texted us during the week to say thank you. Thank you. My gosh, thank you. You know, here's the thing. Church is a hospital. And, this, and, and we know we've, people have said that about this church, being a hospital. It should be a hospital. It absolutely should be a hospital. It's a place where we can go and be healed, saved, delivered, filled up, right? Come on. Whatever the need is, God is faithful to meet the need. Amen? If he said it, you can walk in it. I titled today, If He Said It, You Can Walk In It. Amen? Hallelujah. In Acts 10, 38, Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to say, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. How many of you say, I have the Holy Spirit? I walk with the Holy Spirit. So he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him, right? Amen? Okay, hang on to that scripture. We're going to get back to that at the end of this message. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Because if God said it, you're going to walk in it. If God said it, say, I'm walking in it. I'm walking in the fullness of his promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So Exodus chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And it says, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. You were once dead in trespasses and sin before you said yes to Jesus. Is that not true? Yeah, but he quickened us. He made us alive. The word quickened is to invigorate, to strengthen, and to revitalize. The word quickened is to kindle the flaming fire within. So the Lord said, not only do I want you, not only am I by my sin, my, I've taken upon your sin and I've, I've actually removed all of it. No more are you dead to sin, but you are now alive. You are now quickened. You are now revitalized. You are now strengthened. You, the kindle, the fire that I've placed on the inside of you now burns with passion for me, saith the Lord. This is our, this is who we are. If he said it, you're going to walk in it. If he said you're alive in Christ, if he said he's the one that has strengthened you, that he has made you who were once dead now to be alive, then this is a promise, would you not say? It is a promise. And every promise that God says for you is yes and? Yeah. It is yes and? Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. So let's continue reading here. It says in verse 2, in which you once walked. So come on. You once walked, of course, in, in accordance to the, the course of this world. Say, that's not me any longer. Not me any longer. I'm not walking in accordance to the course of this world. That was a one-time thing. That was a history. That's history. Say, that's history. That's in the past. Because I'm now alive in Christ. I was dead, but I'm alive now. So you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. There is a prince of the power of the air. Yes, but you're alive in Christ. There is a prince of the power of the air. Yes, but you are alive in Christ. That prince of the power of the air is the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. He's a prince, but you are seated in heavenly places with the king of kings. He's the prince, but you've been seated in kingly places in the kingdom with the king. He's a prince walking on this earth, but you've been seated with the king. Who does that make you? Sons and daughters of his kingdom. Sons and daughters of his kingdom. Don't worry. You go, oh, the prince of the power of this world, he's roaming around. You are seated above it Amen. because you're seated in Christ. He's given you authority. He's given you resources now, today. It's your spiritual blessings. We've already gone over this. Your spiritual blessings, authority, and spiritual birthright which is your spiritual blessings, right? You're called, you're chosen, you're set apart, you're sealed, right? You're redeemed. We've gone over these, right? You're loved. Verse 3, among whom we also among whom we also all once were conducting ourselves in the lust of the flesh, 
fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, turn to your neighbor and say, but God, we have a but God moment right now. But God, who is rich in mercy, but God, who has raised me up again to live with him, but God, for he who knew no sin became sin for me, that I would be the righteousness of God. But God, is there a but God in this room today? But God made me alive in Christ. So who are you? You're alive in in Christ quickened quickened because of his sacrifice so but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive sitting together with Christ by grace you have been saved I want you to say that over yourselves by grace I have been saved I've been saved by the grace of God his work for me is enough I am filled with his dunamis power I am completely complete it is finished completely he said it was finished he said it was finished amen ah, hallelujah hey you know what if you're alive you're making noise if you're dead you're silent if you're dead we don't even know you're here because you're dead but I thought I just read that you're alive I thought people that are alive has a little passion I know I'm 100% Italian and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost wow wow I'd say that's a double wow what do you think but come on there is but it's all Jesus it is all the spirit of the living God it is all the power you know why because once I was dead and now I'm alive once I was dead and I know that but now I'm alive in Christ so I have something to shout about I have something to rejoice about and so do we here's the thing we have got to realize that the day and age that we live in the hour that we live in you know the, the church my goodness there's no respect Amen. there's no honor and that's quickly diminishing Amen. it's very very it's quickly diminishing the the respect for God for church for Jesus for Christians on fire Christians it's quickly diminishing right so you can look at things like that in the news and you can go my goodness what do we do I better be careful and I better not you know cause any waves and I better make sure that that I, I don't get to be I don't not singled out I don't want to be singled out right let me tell you something stop that mentality that mentality is not a healthy mentality because let me tell you God has put you on earth for a reason right now for a reason right and he wants you to walk in dunamis power. We are to be gentle as doves, but we're to be wise as a serpent, right? And so whatever the assignments are, and we know that they are there to shut up the church, to silence, to discredit. To, it's an antichrist spirit. It's been there the whole time, but it's been magnified even all throughout last year and still is right now. And you'll look and you'll see in the news just different things that are uh, being allowed and passed and being agreed with that are so ungodly. So ungodly for what? For for so that the church would be silenced because it becomes the new normal yep. Yep. well let me tell you we're not going to have a new normal because God's already stated in his word what the standard is the standard doesn't change just because the world changes the standard stays the same it's God's word right but we have to know who we are and we got to have a little Holy Ghost unction within us that is not afraid of the and not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ we are not ashamed and we are not afraid of declaring who Jesus is we'll stand on the rooftops and declare it we will stand on the rooftops and declare that Jesus is Lord I, I had a Facebook uh, no notification the other day that some of my content is actually not uh, in accordance with uh, their standards uh, that it is offensive and that I needed to take it down I'm like are you kidding me right now I'm not taking it down nothing I put up is offensive well let me let me, let me just take it back it might be offensive to them it might be offensive to them but even Jesus offended people right because the truth sometimes hurts that's why what I put out is all Bible it's all God's Word it's all biblical so if that's offensive well wake up and smell the coffee because it's not the first time that's happened and it's not going to be the last time and that is actually where to how we are to walk but the last time I checked the word God says that he uses the foolish things to confound the wise right he says he uses the weak things to shame the wise right the the strong and the mighty right and so who's that all of us who's that all of us that's us so but he's saying now listen church you were once dead but you are now alive we are now alive in Christ I just read it to you based on Ephesians chapter 2 right we're alive if we're alive we got to act alive how many of you ever heard that come on act alive act alive 
act alive. Is that just in my circles? Has anybody ever heard that? Yeah. A few of you heard of it? Yeah. Act alive. Yeah, come on. Be alive. Be alive. Be alive. Well, this is letting your spirit man rise up. Here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to put a spirit of condemnation. Yeah. He wants to put a spirit of, of heaviness. He wants to put this plague. Well, somebody said, no, but that's what's happened, though. Oh, yeah. There's many, many people, Christians, yeah. that walk with an oppressiveness because they're not aware that they just walked through the grocery store and, gee, something hit them and they didn't yeah. know how to take authority. Amen. It is as simple as that. I'm not Amen. being super spiritual. Amen. I'm not being, I, this is exactly, it's the spirit, it's the prince of the what? Of the what? The power, the prince of the air, of the air. You've got to know your spiritual blessings in Christ. We listed them in chapter 1 of Ephesians, some of them. We're continuing on with the rest of them. Those spiritual blessings are for you to be activated in the wisdom of God, knowing that when this, the, the atmosphere changes, and it's not changed for the good, better, it's changed for the worse, you must go, that's the power of the air. That's the prince of the air. That's not mine because I'm alive in Christ. So that wants to produce death. What does that want to produce? Silence. It wants to produce death. It wants to produce questions in your mind. It wants to, to produce divisions within your family. It wants to, this is what it wants to produce. It wants to produce a dullness in the church. Listen, they can go ahead and go to church, but I'm going to put such a spirit of dullness upon them that most of them won't want to come back. Not in this church, because we'll wake you up. We'll stand you up and shake you up and say, wake up, shake that thing off. Seriously, we have to know our authority, right? It's because love speaks. It's because love speaks. Love has action. Love speaks. Love doesn't always just, oh, let's just, let's just ignore that. You know, there, so there's times that we just have to know. So I say all this to say, okay, we, we are in a season right now where, where we see a lot of uh, the church defeated. But we are not a defeated church. We are a church that is arising. We are an apostolic church to the nations. I want you to say it over yourselves. Sometimes until you say it out of your own mouth, your own confidence doesn't get built up. So, and it's confidence in Christ, right? So we are an apostolic church to the nations. Say it again. We are an apostolic church to the nations. How do I say that with so much confidence? Because that is exactly what the Lord told me before we even planted this church. That this was an apostolic church to the nations. Right? Amen? And so what he is doing in and through this house is not just contained in this house but it's going out it's going out and people are saying would you mentor me would pastors of other nations have been contacting me will you mentor us and I know that's been happening for a long time but at this for, you know I'll get lots of emails but I'll tell you something you know, there's always the fake and then there's always the true, right? There's always the, the counterfeit and the truth. But by the spirit of the living God, that's how we discern what is what. And we go forward by the spirit of the living God because I know God has called us to this. I know. He's already spoken it. And it's not just me. God is raising up an army of believers. He is raising up an army of believers. And so this army, yes, the remnant, this army today gets to come together, right? Just like we did, eating at his table, his banqueting table, his delight. We are his delight. All right. But then we don't just stay there. Then we go, yes, Lord, equip me for your presence, for your power and for your purposes. Equip us, oh God, for we carry your spirit and the armor that he puts upon us is uniquely ours. He says, use the word of God. He says to praise. He says, watch your thoughts, watch your words. He says, I want you to speak only what I say, right? But I want you to walk in an anointing that is yours. Don't try to walk in someone else's anointing. Walk in an anointing that is yours. How many are hearing me right now? You're going to walk in your own shoes. You're going to walk in your own armor. You're going to walk in your God-given identity. Because you won't do very well walking in my shoes unless you're my size feet. <laughs> you're not going to do very well walking in Saul's armor because of if you're David and you're called to take those stones. And if you're called to sling those stones, but only one is necessary. Come on. If you're called for that, then you will not be able able to do and like someone else is doing 
right? So in this day and in this hour, I don't care about age. Age has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. Sometimes I'll look at some of your faces and it's like I can just like, the Holy Spirit just reads your mail. And I just look at you and I go, no, that, that's, I disqualify that. I cancel that. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. God wants the saints, all of them. All of them rising up to do their part and to walk in their own authority and their own anointing, right? And, and this is important because I see a lot of copycats. I see a lot of copycats in the world, in the church. I see a lot of that. No, we can't have that. Your power is when you recognize that Jesus didn't come to give you the leftovers. He didn't. He came to give you his original because you're a masterpiece. Yeah. You are a masterpiece. Yeah. We're going to get there in a moment here in Ephesians, but you are a masterpiece. Yeah. A uniquely hand-woven, knit-together individual. Why would he give you someone's leftovers? Why? So, but the trap is, is that people look to other people and they go, oh, I want to be like that. No, no, no. You were dead to sin. You are now alive in Christ, and Christ has the fullness of his spirit for you. Yeah. Unique and tailor-made for you. Amen? Amen? Okay, let's keep going on here with where we were at. Thank you, Father. Verse 6, he raised us up together and he made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? That in the, ages, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in the kindness shown towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace we have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift. Someone say, ah, salvation is a gift. The enemy is under my feet. I'm alive in Christ. Hallelujah. And it's not of works, lest any man should boast. This is a free gift. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, for good works, that we will walk. It was prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What were we prepared for? What were we prepared for? Good works that we would walk in them. Let's go and put back up um, Acts 10.38. Let's put Acts 10.38 back up. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. What did he do? Good works. Doing good. What did he do? Good works. He did good works. What are we called to do? Good works. What are those good works? Healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Do you recognize that many times healing is tied to demonic activity? In other words, your healing will come where that demon goes. Many times healing happens when demons flee. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And so you've got to know, and, and at this church, we train our people just by, you're going to hear it over and over. You're going to see it displayed over and over because this is what Jesus did. Amen. This is what Jesus did. He did what? Good works. Yeah. What are we to do? Good works. I just read it to you in Ephesians yeah. chapter 10, Ephesians 2, good works. So, so those works, what's good? What's good? Setting captives free. Well, what's good? What's good is looking at someone and say, saying, wait, wait, what happened? What happened? What happened? Uh, uh I see something over you that is not right. It's not of God. Like what happened yes. since the last time I saw you? How many of you do that? Amen. Because we should. Amen. Okay, I want you to lift your hands up because I want, I want to impart something to you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that don't already have this wisdom and spiritual understanding that they can empower, they can impart, when they see their brothers and sisters in Christ that are not walking in the fullness of God, that they can empower, they can impart, they can cast that thing out right now. So in Jesus' name right now, receive the impartation. Just receive the impartation to have the wisdom of God, the increased authority and the ability to discern what is what, casting out things that are not of God. Because we are to take care of one another. We we are to walk in this thing called life together. So receive it right now. Just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba. More, more, more. Just stay there for a moment. Just stay there for a moment. Let the spirit of the living God flow and let him touch you. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase, increase the fire, the fire of God's power right now. His presence. Let it increase. Let it touch you. Thank you, Abba. 
Thank you for the more. Thank you for the confidence. Thank you, Lord God. New wineskins. Yep, the old is going right now. Old is going right now. The old goes. The new has come. New wineskins. God has put in you right now. Yeah, thank you, Abba. Thank you. Tracy, just receive it all. Receive it all. Yeah, Tracy, just continue to receive it. All sorrow go. All sorrow. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Pastor VJ is receiving it. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. You're going to have eyes to see. I command wherever there was dullness in your eyes, and I'm talking spiritually, dullness in your eyes right now. It goes right now. Goes right now. Goes right now. Spiritual dullness, go right now. Spiritual dullness, go right now. In Jesus' name. Yolanda, I've got, can I pray for you, Yolanda? Yeah. Thank you, Abba. Spiritual dullness, go right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Fill her up, God. Yeah. Deep calls unto deep. The spirit of the living God is calling you. Yeah, I hear beckoning you. Beckoning, beckoning. Wow, for the more. Yeah. Spiritual eyes to be opened, opened, opened for all everyone in this room right now for everyone in this room right now we say yes we say yes yeah we say yes if he said it we're gonna walk in it it's ours if he said it I'm walking in it what am I walking in I'm walking in the fullness of Christ because I'm alive in him. I'm alive in him. What did he say? He said that you have been set apart, consecrated unto God, right? So you're going to walk in every promise, every provision. Yes, God. Yes, God. We thank you and we praise you, almighty King of kings and Lord of lords. But I want you to just bask in this chapter because what what didn't seem possible before is so possible in the presence of God Amen. because he is truly with you. He is for you and he's not against you. Just like we sang today. Hallelujah. How are your legs feeling all the way in the back? Thumbs up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What was going on with them? Do you know just other than pain? Circulation. Okay. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, that circulation is strong, it's healthy, and it will never go back to where it was. Instead, Lord, you're going to keep that blood flowing. We thank you, Lord God, for healthy veins, healthy circulatory system. In the mighty name of Jesus, from this point forward, we mark her out in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit our websites at Kathy Capola Ministries at www. KathyCapola.org. You can also visit us at Mighty Wind Broadcasting Network TV at www.mwbn.tv. God bless.